Hey guys, it's Zach. So I was thinking the other day, if I were installing a new solar energy system right now, here in 2025, knowing what I know, what equipment would I pick? There are a lot of good equipment options out there right now, but it's becoming a bit crowded where so few manufacturers really offer anything special over the competition, especially when it comes to panels and batteries. But a few manufacturers do rise to the top of my list based on their cost point, overall value, and the most important variable of them all, my confidence in them as a manufacturer. Keep in mind, none of the manufacturers mentioned today sponsored this video. It's just purely my opinion on what I'd want on my property as a consumer. And if you are currently in the market for solar and battery storage for your home and you're open to learning more, feel free to book a discovery call with me. Links below in the description. It's free, takes 15 minutes, and there's zero pressure whatsoever to move forward. I can either directly help you myself or get you in contact with somebody local in your area that's in my network and they'll take good care of you. Before we get started, one disclaimer I have is this is the best system based on my opinion and my experience. The best to you might be based on value, cost, or purely off the spec sheets. It's all subjective to you and your experience. So let's begin with the solar panels. I'd say here is where I'm going to be the most open-minded about which option I'll go with. There are so many panels out there that are mostly in the same class, offer similar specs, and really get the same job done. The range from mid-tier to ultra premium is somewhat small and can feel like it's splitting hairs and so can be the cost range for the most part. The panel that I would opt for in 2025 is the REC Alpha Pure RX 460 watt and this panel is super impressive. So with REC on the Pure RX, it offers two key industry leading metrics. One is their 0.25% degradation rate annually, which translates to a 92% output in the 25th year. And the other is critical in really hot climates, and that is their temperature coefficient. And temperature coefficient relates to the expected percent losses when it's over 111 degrees roughly. The lower this number is, the better. And for the Pure RX, it sits at minus 0.24%. When it comes to reliability, Reliability, it features their REC Pro Trust warranty if it's installed by a Pro Trust installer, which includes a 25 year product warranty, 25 year performance warranty, and a 25 year labor warranty, which most panels don't offer. And while this is a high wattage panel and more watts per panel sounds like an advantage, that isn't always the case. If a manufacturer just makes a physically larger panel, the uptick in wattage doesn't really make a difference. The more important factor here is power output per square foot or square meter, and this is its power density. This Pure RX is also near the top of the industry here, and ultimately, this blend of performance specs will offer better energy generation in kilowatt hours per watt of power, which is really all you care about at the end of the day. Some people love knowing these little details, and they are a big part of their decision-making process, and others really couldn't care less about all of this, so pick your lane accordingly. Do I really think this makes a big difference in your overall solar experience? Probably not. If you'd like to nerd out about all the top panels out there today, check out my ultimate solar panel guide linked in the description below. Now beyond panel type, a big thing I would consider to add to my setup is Pestivamen to go around the panels, keep pigeons out from under your system. Your system can be saving you all the money in the world, but if it's home to a bunch of pigeons and it's covered in bird poop, you probably won't be happy. If you do live in Arizona and you'd like to add some pest abatement to your solar array, contact my good friend Luis and he'll take good care of you. He just recently did my system and it turned out great. He does pest abatement and solar panel cleaning. So if this is something you wanna do to your system, reach out to him, you'll be in good hands. His contact info can be found in the description below and tell him Zach sent you so he can throw you a discount. Now for my inverter system, the big three offered today are Tesla, Enphase, and Solar Edge. But really which option you'll select will come down to if you're adding a battery system or not. For me, I'd say if I was not adding a battery system, then I'd be between Tesla in Enphase, Tesla would be my string inverter preference, and Enphase would be my micro inverter preference. If I had a pretty simple roof without much shading or complexity, I'd go with Tesla for their central string inverter. It's the same concept as the inverter inside the Powerwall 3. It's just in a smaller assembly. This is actually the inverter that I currently have. It's just paired with a Powerwall 2 system. The inverter system has worked great. It's performed really well. And it's a good fit for me in my home because I have a wide open Southwest roof with zero shading. This inverter system is gonna get you the Tesla monitoring, which I really do like and prefer that overall on a solar only setup. You get consumption monitoring, production monitoring, and all of those metrics within the Tesla app. Tesla's inverter warranty is a little light at 12 and a half years, so 
you could consider an extended warranty through something like Solar Insure or just factor in the cost of a replacement after the warranty timeframe. Now, if this hypothetical home that I was adding solar to did have some shading or a complex roof, or I really wanted panel by panel optimization, or I didn't want anything Tesla, I'd pass on Solar Edge personally and I'd bump up to Enphase and their micro inverters. Even though it is a little more expensive, Enphase does impress here with a 25 year warranty on their micro inverters. So that could weigh into the cost factor. You can expect Enphase to cost us another 15 to 20 cents per watt more when compared to Tesla's option, just based on my experience. Now, if I was adding a battery to my solar setup, which I would absolutely do personally, this would help better determine which inverter you go with since there's this emergence of all-in-one ecosystems where where the battery and the inverter manufacturers are integrated together. Now, when it comes to the batteries, similar to the inverters, there's really only gonna be two paths that I'm gonna consider. One option, which is gonna be the boring answer for most, is using Tesla's Powerwall 3, which has their inverter built into the battery, so it's a DC coupled setup, and it's a little more economical for what you get, especially if you can install the system with Tesla's backup switch to help further cut costs. Powerwall 3 is going to be considered a more budget-friendly option, and if you're able to use the backup switch, meaning your utility is backup switch approved, your electrical is compatible with the backup switch, and all of these variables, then this is a huge point towards Tesla. Now, this is a topic we've touched on a bunch here on the channel, but this is Tesla's advantage because it can let us as the installer use a lot of the electrical equipment as is. So it cuts down on the labor and the material component, which really doesn't change your experience other than lowering the price tag. Tesla's option is a great starting point for a battery system. The inverter is built in, the components are simple, and both the hardware and the software just work well. Also, if you're tight on wall space, Tesla's footprint for the battery system is pretty compact and it's really hard to beat. Capacity is 13 and a half kilowatt hours and it's capable of backing up your entire home with a single battery in most cases. And if you do want more storage capacity, they have their expansion packs, which would give you more kilowatt hours at a lower cost point. And I'd probably opt to add one of these to my Powerwall 3 setup. Right now, the two biggest perks of Tesla and their Powerwall 3 is one, their ecosystem, and then two, their cost per kilowatt hour of installed capacity. Now, my other pick would be from Franklin and their new A-Power 2. Especially if I couldn't use Tesla's backup switch, this really puts Franklin on a more level playing field at this point in time from a cost perspective. Since Franklin's option here does not include an inverter for the solar panels like Tesla's, I'd pair the A-Power 2 to an Enphase microinverter system. With Franklin, you could use any inverter system, but I just feel like Franklin and Enphase pair well together in this situation, and they fit that theme of premium equipment. The A-Power 2 will bump my system capacity up to 15 kilowatt hours, offer a similar power output that will allow us to back up those heavier loads like an AC unit, and give us a really strong 15-year warranty. So we upgrade from a 10-year warranty on the Powerwall for both the inverter and the battery system to a 15-year warranty for Franklin's battery, in 25 years for Enphase's micros. This Franklin setup is typically gonna come in at a higher price point overall, but it also offers that longer warranty as well as more energy capacity and different features and customization. The main one that I know I would use would be the smart circuits control. What this would do is it would operate like a mini smart panel and give you load control on up to three circuits. So this would be for things like your AC unit, your EV charger, your pool pump, and so on. This feature to me would be a must include in my Franklin setup, but I'd also think about their generator input option. And not because I have any interest in pairing a generator to my system, but so I could utilize the V2L vehicle to load option. What this allows is for any compatible vehicle like an F-150 Lightning, Silverado EV, and even the Cybertruck to directly plug into the generator port to recharge the battery during a prolonged grid outage. Now, is this a practical alternative to just adding more batteries? I really don't think so since it can only be used during a grid outage situation, but I just think it's cool and it really does max out what's possible with their battery systems. Another thing I'd consider integrating with either system is a span panel and for those not familiar with span it's a really sweet option basically it functions identical to your home's existing main electric panel however it utilizes smart breakers or circuits where you can remotely control and monitor every single load in your home this can be helpful for several different reasons from general energy management adding more energy data and information or for turning off certain loads to reduce consumption during peak hours or during a power outage. A smart panel like this just takes the entire experience of having a home battery system to another level. Now, whether or not this would be a financial benefit, an experience benefit, or both, 
really comes down to how techy you are and how your utility charges for electricity. Span's whole goal is to reduce the amount of batteries that you need to buy because you're getting more out of each battery through energy management. Perhaps for you, adding more panels or storage capacity would be a better use of money, but I really do like the features of Span personally. But going back to batteries, these two options to me are the standard in today's industry for residential installers. Like I said, it's currently my preference as a representative in the industry, but personally, as a consumer, I wouldn't buy a battery other than Franklin or Tesla right now, even if there are cheaper options out there on paper. The battery system and the software, they're just too important to your user experience and that track record really does matter. I understand everyone has to start somewhere, so this opinion could change over time, but this is a permanent installation to your home, so I gotta go with the Surefire pick. Enphase could possibly be a contender in the battery category with their new 10C battery rolling out this year. Enphase usually does fall on the premium end of the pricing spectrum, but their current 5P option is just really underwhelming. I will throw an honorable mention to Point Guard who might be on my radar as well, but not quite at this point. I don't have any hands-on experience with them and it just seems like too small of a sample size in the US market at this point. I didn't include any of the DIY stuff. It's just not my wheelhouse or area of expertise and I personally wouldn't DIY a system or piecemeal it. I'm gonna leave that to the other great channels out there who discuss that topic more in depth. I think DIY or a more hands-on installation is a better option for a very small group of people people, but I'd rather spend a bit more, find a good installer who can handle it all for me and make sure it's done the right way. I just hear too many messy stories about DIY solar projects. Anyways, if I was going solar in 2025 for my home and I wanted to buy the best solar setup, that's what I'd go with. REC Alpha Pure RX 460 watt for the panel. If I wanted to go DC coupled for the battery, I'd go Tesla Powerwall 3. If I wanted to go AC coupled, I'd go with Franklin A Power 2 paired with the Enphase microinverters. And if it made sense, I would pair all of that with a span panel. Now YouTube thinks you might enjoy watching this video here on the screen. If it looks good, check it out. If you haven't subscribed yet, Yet, hit that button and join the club. Thanks for hanging out. I do appreciate your support and I'll talk with you guys next time.